From the previous class, I have explained you the various cytokines and inflammatory mediators like interferons, interleukins, which are released uh, from the immune cells, that is the antigen presenting cells, neutrophils, micro macrophages. So this is the pictorial uh, tabular form of all those cytokines and their clinical relevance. So this table is very, very important. So this is, uh, I have taken this from Genox Physiology. So the various cytokines. So first of all, what is a cytokine? These are a group of hormone-like substances that usually act in a paracrine fashion to control immunological responses. So cytokines are a group of hormones. Hormones like substances, not actually hormones. They are hormone-like substances that usually act in a paracrine fashion to control the immunological responses. So these are secreted from activated lymphocytes, macrophages, endothelial cells, glial cells, etc. And these are classified into interleukins, tumor necrosis factor, interferons, and then granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, GM, CSF. So the interleukins are different types of, uh, different types are present, that is 1 to 13. So they are produced again by macrophages, activated T cells, antigen presenting cells, etc. They assist in proliferation of B and T cells. So you can see interleukin 1 is produced from macrophage and 2 from Th1 and 4 from Th2, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6 from Th2 cells and 8 from T cells and macrophage and 11 from bone marrow stromal cells and again 12 from macrophage and B cells. So they help mainly in the activation of B cells and T cells, differentiation of each of them. So all these things you should know uh, whenever they uh, they are asked. So most commonly these are asked in MCQs or VIVA. So you should know the cellular source and their activities or actions and the clinical relevance or uh, where they are uh, implied. Suppose interleukin 1 is implicated in the pathogens of septic shock, rheumatoid arthritis and atherosclerosis. So like this, you should know the every interleukin and the other types of cytokines. So tumor necrosis factors are two types, TNF alpha and TNF beta. So these are, uh, alpha is produced by the macrophages and beta T helper 1 cells. So this one produces, uh, helps in the promotion of inflammation. And then the interferons. Interferons alpha and beta are produced from virally infected cells and they activate the induction of resistance of cells to viral infection. And these are used to treat AIDS related Kaposi, sarcoma, melanoma and beta is used to reduce the frequency and severity of relapses in multiple sclerosis. And gamma is released from Th1 helper cells and natural killer cells. And granulocyte macrophage CSF, colony stimulating factor. So this is released from the T cells macrophages and helps in the promotion of growth of granulocytes and monocytes. And it is used to reduce neutropenia after chemotherapy for tumors and in patients treated with AIDS. So this table you should know. Uh, each and every point, at least uh, the main uh, gist of the uh, suppose interleukins and the tumor necrosis factors, interferons. So what are they, from where they are released and what is their action and the clinical relevance, you should know. So this is the question paper for your immediate seniors. So I have told you in the previous class that uh, immune system, uh, the your seniors got in pre-final exam. So this is that question.
define immunity, discuss in detail about innate immunity mechanisms. So all the mechanisms, so that is anatomical, physical and cellular barriers you should write and the process of phagocytosis and then inflammation you should write and elaborate the complement system. So separately it has been asked. So actually this complement system also come in the innate immunity mechanisms but those uh, points you should write only in brief but here the complement system is specifically asked and that also carries five marks you can see for immunity definition one mark and the, all the innate immune mechanisms five marks and especially complement system five marks and add a note on autoimmune diseases that is carrying four marks so autoimmune diseases it will be ta taught to you in adaptive immunity class that will be coming this week uh, coming subsequent classes so like this the question is essay question is divided into different parts here there are four parts so you should first read the question carefully and what are the marks allotted to each part and accordingly you should write the answer so you should write the definition and you can uh, just classify the immunity and details about the innate immunity mechanisms and then put the heading complement system, draw that flow chart and then describe briefly and lastly note on autoimmune diseases like this the questions will be asked and you should draw, write the answers accordingly. So now coming to the main uh, topic for today that is complement system. So it is a vital component of defense system having integral role not only in the innate immunity but also adaptive. So it is integral or common to both the systems innate and adaptive. So it, it provides good defense against harmful infectious agents by process like direct cell lysis or augmenting inflammation and phagocytosis. So by any of these mechanisms, it will destroy the uh, harmful bacteria or the pathogens. And this system is composed of more than 30 serum proteins present normally as inactive zymogen forms. So these uh, proteins, these will be like complementing or additive to the effect of antibodies. So that's why this system is called complement system. So these are present normally in the serum as inactive zymogen form. So there are nine central components named C1 to C9 and again C1 is divided into three more subtypes that is C1Q, C1R, C1 and S. So totally there will be 11 uh, complement proteins present in this system. So these cymogen proteins are activated in a cascade manner same like coagulation system activation of clotting factors in a cascade manner. So that like that these proteins C1 to C9 they will be activated one after the other and the complement proteins in a, interact with each other and perform range of functions from direct cell lysis enhancement of phagocytosis inflammation and activation of B and D lymphocytes. So there are three pathways. This complement system is activated by three pathways. One is classical, one is lectin and one is alternative pathway. So classical, lectin, alternative pathway. These three pathways converge and further proceed the terminal pathway that starts with the formation of C3 convertase and ends up by the formation of membrane attack complex. So these three pathways converge that means final point will be common for all these three and further proceed the terminal pathway that starts with the formation of C3 convertase and ends up by formation of membrane attack complex. So we will see this in the coming slides. The classical pathway is the first complement activation pathway discovered. So it is often referred to as antibody dependent pathway as it is activated after recognition of Hc portion of the antibody. So what happens here in this classical pathway means C1, this complement protein 1 will be binding to Ig attached to an antigen. So Ig immunoglobulin already attached to an antigen. So that will be bound to the C1 protein. So this binding triggers a sequence of events that activate other complement proteins. So classical 
pathway is triggered by C1 protein consisting of recognition molecule C1Q and two protease molecules C1R and C1S. So C1 is made up of three subcomponents. C1Q recognizes immune complex and activates C1R and which then activates the C1S. C1S cleaves C4 into C4A and B. So C1 after activating the C1S part will cleave C1, C4 into A and B and it also cleaves C2 into C2A and C2B. So C4B and C2A combine to form C3 convertase. Okay, so C4B and C2A will be combined to form C3 convertase. So in this picture you can see C1Q made up of three sub components in this together it will form C1. So the C1 uh, part, C1 component will bind to the IgG already attached to an antigen. So here you can see, so this is the classical pathway uh, of complement system. So the C1 bound to antigen antibody complex. So immunoglobulin bound to antigen so that will be recognized by C1Q part so the remaining C1 R and S will again activate or convert C4 C2 into C4A C4B so C4B and C2A will combine to form C3 convertase so that is C3A so so this is provided in other alternative pathway so these two again will uh, go and activate the C5 converting C5 to C5B and further that will convert the or activate the C6 to C9 uh, proteins. So here you can see again one more picture of the same complement system classical pathway initiated by antigen binding antibody binding to antigen. So here you can see the C4B and C2A will combine to form C3 convert is C3B will be responsible for oxygenization and phagocytosis. So these are the other pathways, lectin and alternative. C3A is responsible for inflammatory response and C5A and C7, activated C5, 6, 7 are responsible for histamine release activity, uh, promoting the movement of macrophage towards the invasion site and C5B to C9 that is C6, C7, C8, C9 causes holes to appear in the cell called cytolysis and results in its destruction. So what is the function of each and every protein you should remember. Okay, C3P helps in oxygenization and fat to cytosis and C3A uh, inflammatory that is promote the phagocytosis and C5A also C3A, C5A causes the inflammatory response by releasing the histamine and then uh, activated C567 also helps in this and here you see C5B to C9. So C5B, C6, C7, C8, C9 will cause holes to appear in the cell membrane that is cytolysis. So these four points you remember. And next the lectin pathway. So it is activated after recognition of carbohydrates on the surface of bacteria by recognition molecules including mannan binding lectin and ficolins and C complement protein 11. So this lectin pathway is activated after recognition of carbohydrates on the surface of bacteria. And this pathway can recognize and kill pathogen even in the absence of antibodies. Okay, so when the for the classical pathway, the antibody attached to antigen is uh, re, uh, prerequisite. But here, without antibodies, also it can recognize and kill the pathogen. Manos, manon binding lectin, ficolins, and C11, C complement 11 can recognize wide range of carbohydrates on pathogen surface. After recognition, these will bind to MBL associated serine protease (MASP2) and activate it. Okay, so here you can see in this picture. After recognizing the pathogens, uh, these MBL ficolins they bind to MBL associated serine protein and activates it. So MASP2 upon activation cleaves 4 into 4A and 4B, C2 into C2A and C2B, and C4B and 
C to A combined to form again C3 convertase. So uh, in the previous picture, leptin binding pathway is also same uh, like classical except for the starting step. For classical pathway, the starting step is antigen antibody complex binding to C1 that will convert the uh, C4, C2 into 2A and 2B, 4A and 4B, and then that will form the C3 gun. Here, the further steps are uh, C4, C2 cleaving are same, but the first step is here MASP2, manon, bind, manon binding lectin associated serine protease 2. So, this upon activation will cleave the C4, C2 proteins into A and B. So, C4B to A will form the C3 convertase. So, remember the C3 convertase, it is common for the uh, remaining pathways also. So, here you can see activated MASP2 associated with MBL or ficolin cleaves C4 into A and B which binds to microbial surface. And again same, C, it cleaves C2 into C2, uh, A and B. So, the, here C2B combines with the C4B. And here C4B to A is an active C3 convertase cleaving C3 into C3A and B. So, C3 protein is again cleaved by this C4B to A. So, C3A will combine and bind, C3B will combine to the uh, already present complex C4B and 2A. So, on the microbial surface, okay, so this will be again one molecule of C4B and 2A can cleave up to 1000 molecules of C3 to C3B. So, many C3B molecules bind to the microbial surface. So, C3A will be present in the uh, serum and C3B will bind to the microbial surface. So, that is lectin pathway. So, what happens after that C3 convertase, we will see in the coming slides. So, in the alternative pathway, this pathway does not recognize, require any recognition molecules for activation. It requires continuous covalent bonding of C3 to pathogen surface. So, covalent bonding of C3 complement protein 3 to the pathogen surface. Spontaneous conformational changes in C3 molecule results in formation of C3H2O. So, C3H2O binds to Fp. And that is uh, uh, FB. So these are the special proteins present only in the alternative pathway, uh, like propyl in FB, FD, and also factor one, and you can see BA, this green colored one, BB. So these are the specific proteins present only in the alternative pathway. So C3H2O binds to FB, uh, resulting in C3H2OB. So factor D cleaves FB into BA and BB. Uh, BA fragment is released, whereas BB remains attached to C3H2O to form again C3H2O BB component, which is called C3 convertase. So here, initial uh, alternative pathway C3 convertase is produced. So C3H2O bound to BB. So factor B is uh, cleaved by factor D into BA and BB. BB will be attached to C3H2O. So, that is present in alternative pathway. So, coming to the uh, last final step, that is the terminal pathway, where all the three pathways will converge upon the formation of C3 convertase. So, this C3 convertase cleaves C3 into C3A and C3B. So, C3A is released and C3B bound to uh, C3 convertase and forms CS convertase or C5. So here C5 convertase. So C5 convertase cleaves C5A and C5B. C5A is released whereas C5B binds to C6, C7 and C8 to form multimolecular complex C5B678. So this complex induces polymerization of several C9 molecules which form a lytic pure uh, lytic pore, sorry, it's misspelling mistakes, lytic pore called membrane attack complex. Okay, so what is happening here, you just see after formation of C3 convertase, it cleaves C3 into A and B. 
A is released and B is bound to the convertase and forms C5 convertase. So C5 convertase again cleaves 5 into 5A and 5B. So 5B is bound to C678 complement proteins. So C5B678 is a complex protein. So this will activate or induce polymerization of C9 molecules. So which forms a lytic pore called membrane attack complex present on the bacterial surface or the uh, microbial surface. So this is also the same explanation, the picture C5B67 complex and then 8 will come and attach and the 9 will be polymerizing. This will helping or inducing the polymerization of 9. So that will form a round lytic pore like thing on the surface of the microbial uh, pathogen. So this pore is directly entering into the inside of the cell that the hole is created which uh, causes the entry of liquid or fluids from the extracellular fluid into the viral or pathogen uh, cell. So membrane here you can see lot of pores are formed created on the membrane of the microbial pathogen. So this is also one more picture the side on tubes are present. So this is the schematic representation of membrane attack complex pore. So this is only half transaction is shown. So this is a complete pore. So this is membrane attack complex pore created by the complement system. This is one of the major mechanism of killing of the microbial pathogens by means of uh, cytolysis by the induced by the complement system. Biological effects of complement system. The major function is pathogen recognition leading to lysis of target cell. Other additional biological activities are direct lysis of bacteria by membrane attack complex which is effective against gram negative bacteria within cell wall and anaphylotoxin during the activation of complement smaller cleavage products of C3 and C5 that is 3A and 5A which are released are called anaphylotoxins and opsonization cleavage products C3B, C4B, 5B facilitate phagocytosis by opsonizing the pathogen surface. So I have told you no opsonization means be making the pathogen tasty for the cell so that it can go and attack it or uh, engulf it. So apart from the lysis of target cells, these are the other biological activities produced by the complement system. That is direct lysis, anaphylotoxin production, opsonization. So we, have, we know that direct lysis is just simply breaking of the cell wall and uh, damaging the and destroying the microbial path. Anaphylotoxins are smaller cleavage products C3A and C3-5A continuously released into the fluid serum. So they interact with corresponding receptors on the immune cells that is C3AR and C5AR. This mediate the release of different mediators that act as strong chemo attracts for neutrophils, monocytes and macrophages. And these also induce granulation of mast cells and basophils releasing histamine, prostaglandin and kinins which cause vasodilation and capillary leakage or increased capillary, capillary permeability which causes increasing influx of inflammatory mediators and leukocytes at the site of infection. And finally, the re result will be increased phagocytosis and increased inflammatory response of the to the pathogen. These anaphylotoxins maintain the balance between anti and pro-inflammatory pro immune response by inducing or down-regulating inflammatory cytokines. So inducing means positive, more number of cytokines are producing. Down-regulating means negative or decreased response, uh, decreased production of cytokines. So the balance is maintained by the anaphylotoxins and the process is this one, degranulation of mast cells and basophils releasing histamine which cause vasodilation and increased capillary permeability. So this is the mechanism of action of anaphylotoxins. And opsonization is the process by which a pathogen is tagged by serum components for recognition by the macrophages and leukocytes. So the tagging is done by C3B. 
so apart from c3b the c4b c5b also help in tagging or uh, bounding to the pathogen surface macrophage and leukocytes have receptors like cr1 and cr3 which recognize the opsonins and promote phagocytosis of pathogen opsonization also helps in clearing immune complexes so this is one of the major uh, action of the opsonization of by the complement proteins C3B and C4B attach immune complexes and bind to CR1 on erythrocytes transported to spleen and liver from where they are eliminated. So this is how they help in eliminating the immune complexes. That is antigen antibody complexes. Degradation products of C3B that is IC3B, C3C, uh, C3DG can also act as ligands for C21 and CD. Uh, 35 on B cells which activate B cells and produce help in the production of antibodies. So these are the cluster differentiation cells which will be uh, seen in cellular immunity that is adaptive or acquired immune system. And this complement also resolve inflammation by providing safe clearance of apoptotic cells. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. So the cells which are already dead and destroyed in the body, they are removed by complement system. Morphological changes in apoptotic cell results in breakdown of membrane integrity and loss of membrane complement regulators on the cell surface like C1Q, MBL, L-ficolin, H-ficolin bind to these cells resulting in activation of complement, increasing opsonization and that will finally trigger the removal of cell debris by phagocytic cell uptake. Okay, so the morphological changes are recognized and then they uh, result in activation of complement by increasing opsonization and again removal of those cell debris by the phagocytosis or the cell uptake. And how this complement system is regulated? So continuous exposure of pathogen triggers additional immune reactions that might be harmful for host cell. The host cells are protected from bystander lysis by number of regulators that control the complement attracts. So uh, the complement system attacks the pathogens but there is a chance that normal cells are also uh, destroyed by this complement so for that the regulator proteins are very very important so they maintain a delicate balance between activation and inhibition resulting in clearance of only foreign cells and self cells are protected the complement regulators are divided into two main categories surface bound and fluid phase regulators the fluid phase regulators are factor H, C1 inhibitor and C4 binding protein. So factor H is the dissociated, dissociated the C3 convertase of uh, alternative pathway, Compliment, completely removes C3B from C3B, BB. This is alternative pathway by binding to C3B in fluid phase and serves as cofactor for FL mediate C3B degradation. So you just remember the names factor H and it dissociates the C3 convertases of uh, alternative pathway and C1 inhibitor it is regulator of classical and lectin pathway it blocks serine protease of classical and lectin pathway and it acts as inhibitory substance substrate and C4 binding protein acts in a similar way in lectin and the classical pathway as factor H does in alternate pathway. It serves as cofactor to factor 1 to decay C4B to its hemolytically inactive fragments and it accelerates the decay of C3 convertase. It binds C4B and inhibits binding of C2A and hence inhibiting the formation of C3. So what is the result of this fluid phase regulators? Finally, they should inhibit the C3 convertase. The pathway uh, uh, sequence of the pathway should be stopped in between so that is at the point of C3 convertase and the surface bound regulators are membrane cofactor protein MCP CD46 and it serves as a cofactor to factor 1 mediated cleavage of C3B and C4B into small cleavage products that is inactive products 
and protectin CD59 binds to C8 and C9 inhibiting the binding of C5B7 to 7 preventing the formation of membrane attack complex and decay accelerating factor it dissociates the already formed C3 convertases so here you never remember the names membrane cofactor protein protectin and decay accelerating factors and next coming to the other topic of today's class defects in innate immune system so till now we have seen the complement system three pathways and the functions of complementing complement system and then the regulators of complement system and the defects in innate immune system are we can categorize into two defects in leukocyte function and defects affecting the complement system so in leukocyte function we can again uh, categorize into four defects in leukocyte adhesion defects in fibrolysome function defects in microbicidal activity and defects in tlr signaling so leukocyte adhesion defects are type 1 and type 2 so this is just for your knowledge so sometimes this may come as questions uh, so this is not found in your regular books. So this is taken from other standard reference book that is chain based immunology and uh, Ganong. This, this is present some uh, in clinical box in Ganong's physiology. Okay, so you can just have a look. Leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 1 and type 2. And the clinical problem related to this is recurrent bacterial infections due to inadequate granulocyte function. And defects in phagolysosome, here it is very important syndrome present, which is called chediac higashi syndrome. It is an autosomal recessive type of disorder and there is defect in fusion of phagosome and lysosome and there, thereby phagocytic function itself will be becoming de uh, defective. So leading to increased susceptibility to infections. And one more important disease with the defect in microbicidal activity is chronic granulomatous disease. There is defect in bacterial killing. This will be resulting from inherited defects in the genes encoding the components of phagocyte oxidase, phagolysosomal enzyme that generates superoxides. So this uh, generation of superoxides is the main uh, part in phagocytosis. So I have told you in the first class of this innate immunity. Uh, so, there is inherited defect in the genes encoding component of this enzyme and the common variants are X-linked defect and autosomal recessive defect. So, the name of this disease comes from macrophage-rich chronic inflammatory reaction that tries to control the infection and initial neutrophil defect is inadequate. So, why the name chronic granulomatous means because of macrophages, increased number of macrophages that uh, that are produced at the site of infection so they will be trying to control the infection and the neutrophil defect is inadequate this leads to collection of activated macrophages forming granulomas so this will be present in your second year pathology so again you will be knowing in detail about this uh, all these disorders but for time being you just know the names of different uh, defects in immune system innate immune system so in tlr signaling defects in tlr3 and defects in myd88 so this are the signaling pathway i have told you in the previous class a receptor tlr3 is a receptor for viral rna resulting in recurrent herpes simplex and cephalitis and myd88 the adapted protein downstream of multiple tlrs associated with destructive bacterial pneumonias and the deficiencies affecting complement system so c2 deficiency this is the most common complement protein deficiency and c2 or c4 these are the component of classical pathway associated with increased bacterial or viral infections and many patients have no clinical manifestations because alternative pathway is adequate for control of most infections and deficiency of C1Q will result in SLE, SLE that is systemic lupus erythematosus like autoimmune diseases. Deficiency of components of alternative pathways that is factor D and troperdin is very rare. 
and it is associated with recurrent pyogenic infections. And C3 complement, if it is deficient, it results in susceptibility to serious and recurrent pyogenic infections and there is also increased incidence of immune complex mediated glomerulonephritis because C3 is a, a common for all the three pathways. So if that is only defect, deficient, it results in serious infections. And deficiency of complements C5 to C9. So these are required for assembly of membrane attack complex MAC, which is involved in lysis of organic organisms by cytolysis. And deficiency leads to recurrent Neisserial, Neisserial, that is conococcal and meningococcal infections. So this Neisseria bacteria have thin cell walls and are susceptible to lytic actions of the complements. C1 inhibitor. So this is a regulator of complement protein. So if it is deficient, that inhibitor uh, function is not present. So that will lead to most common hereditary angioedema. It is autosomal dominant. So most common than complement deficiency st uh, states. So it targets uh, proteases specifically. C1R and S of the complement cascade and factor 12 of coagulation pathway and calicrin system. So the C1 inhibitor targets these proteases. So if it is deficient, the complement uh, uh, system itself is not inhibited, so it goes on being activated, so that will lead to hereditary angioedema. There is unregulated activation of calicrin, which may lead to increased production of acid-active peptides such as paradicrinin. So, calicrin and bradycanin are the proteins. Although exact nature of bioactive compound produced is uncertain, the patients have episodes of edema affecting the skin and mucosal surface such as larynx and GIT. This may result in life-threatening asphyxia, nausea, vomiting and diarrhea after minor trauma or emotional states. Acute attacks can be treated with inhibitor, C1 inhibitor, and concentrates prepared from human plasma. So these inhibitor uh, com concentrates which are prepared from human plasma, so that can be used to treat the acute attack. So this is the brief uh, summary of all the defects which I have told you till now. So just have a look at this. So the same explanation is given. So that's all for today. So to summarize, finally, all the three classes of innate immunity, which I have told you, uh, we have seen the overview, that is the differences between innate and adaptive and what are the mechanisms present in innate immunity, different mechanisms, that is anatomical, physical and cellular barriers and the phagocytosis, inflammation. So that all are present along with the microbial pattern recognition. So here the main concepts, important concept, uh, I have explained you pathogen associated molecular patterns and also the pattern recognition receptors by the uh, macrophage dendritic cells or the antigen presenting cells. So they, those cells which are produced in the innate immunity have pattern recognition receptors like TLRs, 2 like receptors, NLR, NLR, and C type lectin receptors. All those are PRRs. Okay, that we have seen in the previous class. And along with that, antiviral responses that is, production of cytokines, antibacterial peptides, and interferons, interleukins. And all those things we have seen and innate instruction of adaptive. So after producing the innate immunity, that will help in further development of adaptive immunity. So innate is instructing the body to produce also adaptive or acquired immune response. Okay, and then we have seen in today's class complement system and effects of innate immune system. So this is the complete uh, topic of innate immunity which we have taken three classes to complete.
so take notes of all the three classes and check your textbooks prepare notes on your own so that uh, these points are not missed when you uh, read for the exam so finally some mcqs i thought to give so note down these mcqs answer the questions and then uh, send me the uh, answer paper that is the question number and answer option a b or c or d uh, by taking a picture you can send me by telegram so nine questions i have given totally so answer all those nine and send me uh, by evening so that's all i hope you understood that in it community so thank you everyone